down the straight. So he's still there with some chance. And another horse who loves Flemington is number four, Black Bean. He had the hit out the other day. Brett Preble is the rider for Matthew Ellerton here at Flemington. And every time I see him, I think, wow, what a good-looking horse he is. Well, he is, and he's a lovely, quiet horse as well. You can see there, would be a lovely ride. And uh, for Brett Preble, who's on fire at the moment, he'll, he'll um, go very well here, Peter. He always does down the straight. Um, I think Brett will probably try to elect to come out to the outside. What about the big grey here, Jen? Number five, Abinishio, Darren Gauchi, the rider for John Hawkes. Well, his record at this distance is absolutely outstanding. He's had 14 starts at it, and he's won seven of those mm. with a placing as well. Uh, he likes to get up on the pace, this horse. I thought he went quite well in the shorts. Um, just because of his distance record, Peter, it's hard to rule him out. When you say he went well in the shorts, you mean, oh, in, I mean the in the race? Sorry, yes, yes, yes it's in the shorts. Was wearing <laughs> Number six, Dettois, Darren Beatman, the rider for Paul Perry. Stop it. Sorry. Um, Natoire goes terrific down the straight. Um, a seven-year-old now, and he's certainly fitter for a couple of runs as well. He's a very capable sprinter on his day. He does probably prefer the sting out, but uh, I just can't leave him out with that record of his. We we'll move down to number 10, and that is super elegant. And the rider, as we said, Chrissy Munts replacing the injured Jim Cassidy. Well, his best runs have been on the wet so far. He is a three-year-old in this race. Um, 52 and a half, gets in quite nicely with the weight there. Um, I, I've given him a place chance there. And the other big hope in the race in my selection is number 11, Mannington, to be ridden by Glenn Boss for Russell Cameron. Should appreciate coming up the straight because it just wobbled on the corner at Caulfield. Yes, I had a chance to have a look at her all back in the winter, Peter, and she's got some terrible front legs, but it doesn't yeah. stop her. She can use them. Um, 50 kilos here. She looks extremely well suited, and she's going to be quite hard to beat here. So there are the main chances in race eight, the Emirates Classic, in front of this enormous crowd. We haven't had a crowd figure as yet for Oaks Day, but surely it must be getting up close to 100 thousand people and maybe a few more they're heading up towards the gates why don't we have a look at the tote figures as they stand at the moment all around australia making their way up towards the 1200 meter start so let's check out those tote figures with dan maliki in the commentary box yes peter toledo at 12 dollars uh, iron horse at 37 360 for black bean and around the 19 dollar mark ab 780 for notoire 19 dollars for ruthless tycoon then Giscar number nine at pretty generous odds as well super elegant just into the double figures and uh, mannington at two dollars 30 is the warm favorite and has been all the way through we saw far rain another three-year-old filly win this race last year so a final look in uh, the ring mannington the uh, firm favorite anything changed there tim no Dan, it's been firm all the way through. It's actually back quite solidly early. It's got the drifts out. Been no money for anything, in fact, to be quite uh, honest with you. Black Bean's been a noted drifter down here. If anything, there's been a bit of specking for Natoire, but as it stands, it's Mannington, Black Bean, and Natoire with, with Toledo given a chance by the punters. But uh, Mannington will uh, certainly jump the favourite, Peter Donigan. Thank you, Timothy Gossage, and they look as though they are the three. They're our trifecta if you take all of our top tips. Mannington, I'm the only one who's gone for her. Black Bean from Jenny, Letsy, Dan and Gary, and Natoire from Richard Friedman. And they are behind the gates now for this eighth event, starting up at Epsom Road. And all the way down they'll come, and I don't think there's any doubt that most of them will want to get to the outside. I think that was indicated by the straight races earlier. And you definitely want uh, the horses to get as quickly as they possibly can to the uh, outside rail. Now, we were going to have a look at number eight, Ruthless Tycoon, and uh, let's do it now. It's showing $19.70 on the tote to be ridden by Damien Oliver. Jen, what did you make of Ruthless uh, Tycoon's chances here? Well, um, outclassed really at Wave for Age two starts ago in the Mercedes Benz there, Peter. Uh, got back at, at Mooney Valley, um, but doesn't have to get back in its races. Can go forward. I'd say a rough place chance here. OK. Now, Roy Higgins has joined us once again, courtesy of Sport 927, with his thoughts on the Emirates Classic. Roy? Great shot that, Peter. Fantastic. Uh, I'm going with the little lady down on the bottom. Oh, gee, she's done well. 11 Mannington. Gee, she's a lovely, powerful individual. She has got the worst legs of any female here at Flemington today. Yeah, Jen just said that. They're shockers. Oh, they're terrible legs. You know, unfortunately, she's probably not going to last long. She'll be at stud pretty soon. But um, uh, she looked outstanding. I'm going a bit of value into my Quinellas and Trifectas, number six, Natoire. This is as good as he's looked for quite some time. Always runs well down here. And number nine, Giz Card. One trained here by Midge Dinner. Oh, gee, he's a nice horse, and he looked excellent. And, uh, I'm, not, and I'm throwing number four, Black Bean, uh, in as my extra multiple. So for the eighth on the program, I marked them 11, 6, 9, and 4. So a bit of value there from Roy Higgins in uh, Giz Card, number nine. Might be one to throw in your trifectas or Quinellas. Stephen Arnold takes the ride aboard the Flemington Specialist Toledo. And a short time ago, he caught up with Mark Aston. Thank you.
Stephen, what chance Toledo in the next? I think he's got a chance. Uh, back to his better form, he'd be right in this race. You know, he's got a bit of class and back on a firm track, I think he's a chance. Stephen Arnold with his thoughts there. Last of the runners to Twa arriving up behind the gates. And they are a long way away, so Dan will be powering those binoculars up and taking a look at... Not a big field here, but as I said, I think they'll be uh, queuing up to get to the outside rail here. Guineas and honour the name of the scratching, so a field of nine. Any last-minute information for us from the betting ring? Tim Goss? Absolutely, Peter. They've come for Mannington in a big way now. This horse is touching uh, dollar for dollar, very close to being the only runner in the, in the carnival so far to be close to being in the red. Mannington's a big go late here in the ring. OK, so a flood of money for Mannington. Three-year-old filly won the race last year in Far Rain, as Dan Maliki said, will another one win in the year 2000. We're about to find out. How did you mark them, Gary Willis? Yes. Well, I like Black Bean and Mannington. And they're racing now. Giscard from the outside gate jumped away quickly and he'll go straight to the outside rail. They're all going to work their way across. Abinicio was up there. Mannington showing uh, early speed. In fact, she'll take up the running now from Natoire. And Abinicio, which is the grey, into about third spot. Giscard is right in behind them. Black Bean in the green colours is up into about fifth position for Mine Horse. And then came Ruthless Tycoon between runners and Toledo and Super Elegant. Heading up towards the 800 metres now. And the leaders are Mannington from Natoire. In third spot, Abinicio, Ruthless Tycoon, Giscar. Then came Black Bean. Super Elegant is the furthest one in from Toledo and three links to Wine Horse. Racing onto the course proper, 500 to go. Notoire just in front of Mannington, Abinicio. And then came Black Bean moving into it from Super Elegant. Ruthless Tycoon, Giscard, Toledo and then Iron Horse. 400 to go. Mannington put under some pressure. It's joined Notoire, Black Bean after the pair. Then Abinicio, Giscard. Notoire fights on Black Bean. Mannington still coming the centre. Black Bean's reeling them in now. Black Bean goes up to Mannington and Nadoir and then Toledo, but it's Black Bean in front of Mannington and Toledo, and Black Bean wins at a neck. Black Bean first beat Toledo and Mannington, then Nadoir, Giscar, Abinicio, Ruthless Tycoon, Super Elegant, and an Iron Horse. Black Bean by, written by Brett Preble. That's his third win for the day. And I think it puts him on top of me riding performances over the carnival now, Dan. But she didn't have a... Oh, an arm for a horse coming to about the 300. Really is a specialist at Flemington, isn't he, Black oh. Bean? And you could see that the, he had a kick left, whereas Mannington was put under pressure. She fought on well. She did. But she was under pressure at the 400. Toledo gets second, so it's 4, 2 and 11. Isn't it funny how these straight, like Toledo's a great horse up the straight. Black Bean's a real special. And these horses really seem to love it. And the Twa's just missed out on the, the place. It'll wind up in fourth spot. So though the four horses that were in the yeah. market, all with winning possibilities yeah. at this point. Now there's Black Bean, three from the outside rail. Brett Pearl was just giving him a backhander there. Now he's going to go for him. The Twa's the one in the, uh, on the outside rail. Mannington in between them. And Toledo's just inside Black Bean in the darker green colours. But Black Bean, Brett Pearl was just riding him hands and heels now. Just gives him a wave with the stick. He hasn't hit him. Just give him a wave, and he's got the race won. Toledo's the one on the inside that gets home all right, but Mannington, one from the outside, and Latoire. And here's Johnny Letts with Brett Preble. He's yes, going well, John. Yeah, oh, look, just what a combination, Brett Preble and Black Bean. Brett, you just love this horse, don't you? Yeah, he's, he's one of my favourites. I've got a soft spot for him. He's, uh, he always performs well for me, and... Uh, you know, geez, he comes alive this time of year too, the boy. Yeah, and Brett, so do you, of course. Now you've got the five winners over the carnival, got to the top of the jockey's tree over the carnival. But, Brett, this horse, he walks around the mounting yard, he looks like a film star, and when you go out and get on him, you just seem as if the, the combination is just unstoppable, isn't it? Amazing, yeah. You know, I think I'm the only one that went on him, apart from Blake Julia, I think, in a maiden one day. Yes. Would have been a good thing in a maiden, wouldn't he? <laughs> yeah. but, but he knows this, this horse, he seems yeah. to just, he knows to the crowd, doesn't he? Yeah, he looks, for sure. He, he walks like he's coming back now, and he's as if to say, well, I've done my job again. Yeah, I've yeah. done it again, so. Switches off and just relaxes and takes it all in. He loves it. I'm sure he loves it. He's going to make a great horse for someone when he's finished racing. I think he might finish up at your place. I can't wait till we get to uh, Hong Kong and we'll have a bit more fun with him, mate. And you'll be with him? I'll be with him. They can't get you off him now, can they? <laughs> <laughs> I'll need a jackhammer. Another, another group two, Brett. The beauty. Yeah, it's lovely. And, uh, a group yeah. one, the group two today. Yeah. Thanks, Matty. You know, Matty's done a great job with him. And, he uh, certainly has. You know, he sort of took a punt and backed him up. And he's never ever done it, really. No. So, uh, you know, I would have loved to ride him the other day, but I rode there. The stable, mate. And 
you know, he ran fourth, but he's today, proved, tried track. He's proved it right today, though, mate. Beautiful. Yeah, congratulations, Brett. Thanks. Thanks very much to John Letts with Brett Preble, and here is the man himself, Matthew Ellerton. He's uh, one of your favourites, this bloke, and as Letts, he said, he's got the film star looks, and today, a film star performance. Yeah, you know, he, the other day, he probably got to the front a bit soon and on the wrong side, so I mean, Brett knows him very well, and uh, you know, <coughs> the horse runs very well straight and he did so again today. You backed him up here, Matty, and uh, I don't think he's ever really backed up before, has he? Not in his short space, you know, as a three-year-old sort of worked with him, but uh, you know, he probably hasn't in the last 12 months, but you know, I just had a little bit of a query deep down below today. Yeah, obviously it was no worry for him. I saw you one day over at the stables and we had a look at this horse and he might be a magnificent hulking thing, but he's a, he's a bit of a quiet, gentle lamb in the stables. Yeah, he's so, you know, he's, um, he looks after himself and he's, uh, Where you make a decision on that? No, oh, the invites aren't out yet. Okay. Well done, mate. Thank you. Matthew Allerton, I think he might get an invite, and if he does, he'll be pretty hard to beat. Black Bean, the winner in race eight, the Emirates Classic, as Brett Preble returns to scale after yet another winner at the Flemington Carnival. We take a break. You're watching Network 10's coverage of the third day of the 2000 Melbourne Cup Carnival. Hope you're enjoying it. There's that little salute with the whip. Isn't he an impressive looking animal, Black Bean? Good win. Good win. The third day. Oh, you don't get the raw prawn here. Oak State the, day. Yes, Oak State means a lot of things. Goodness me. We're after correct weight, we are, on the Emirates Classic. And it looks like Mr. De Gleason's only too happy to give it to us. He does. Dividends on the race, please, Danny Malecki. Yes, Tim, the winner, Black Bean, 380 and 150. Second to Toledo, $2.90. And 11 Mannington, $1.30. Quinella of uh, 1850. Exacta, 3460. Trifecta, 6410. So some popular results for a change. Running double, pay $20.50. The daily double today here in Victoria, 9780. And for those that played the quaddy with that big jackpot, the numbers were 1924 and the dividend in the quaddy, $3,488.10. Well, this is starting to catch on now. Three of the last four races, Tim have had single priced winners, single figure winners. Yeah, but that one was a big drifter in the market, that's for sure, and certain Black Bean and a lot of punters obviously uh, didn't think the horse could back up, but it was pretty impressive. Brett Preble now ridden the last three of the last four and finished second on the other and he's on the favourite in the last emission. This is a pretty open race. One right down the bottom, Steel has seen is, uh, as I could say, 15 to 1 on the tote. Half that price in the ring. Peter Donegan. Uh, it's not beyond the realms of possibility that Brett Preble might finish up equaling his performance of last year when he rode nine winners. How remarkable would that be? There are the tight figures, and as Tim said, he's on the favourite here in the last, and it is the Super Tap favourite as well, number five, Emission. I think it can win. What are you like, Jen? Well, I'm going for the running double, Pete, <laughs> which is a nice change. Oh, yes, congratulations. <laughs> oh, it took long enough. Um, I like number two, the Fats, here. Uh, this horse, he gets back in his race. He's had three runs in. He's stepping up to the 1,800 metres. He, and he should be running on towards the end. I think he can go very close. Number 16, I agree with uh, Tim there. Um, still a scene. He's got a terrific chance in the race. And, of course, number five, Emission's been racing very, very well. Yeah, I like Emission to give Brett Preble another winner here on the last. And reminding you that Patrick Payne is the rider for number two, the Fats. Strathfield race predictor, 1,800 metres here. And we'll take you down to the top of the straight. Of course, they have a long run, around about 400 metres. Spoke not an overly long run to the first turn. But they uh, still want to get a position by the time they get to the 1400 metre mark and then they'll come down this long and famous Flemington Strait yet again and hopefully they'll be able to sort out the winner on the Strathfield Race Predictor. 8, 13 and 5 are the numbers. So it is metallic, which is currently showing around about $10, $11. So number eight, Metallic, to beat number 13. Yes. And that is Indian Ridge and number five, Emission. And that's the one that I've gone for. Well, very special presentation coming up now to this wonderful horse, Black Bean. Good-looking animal he is. And uh, the chairman of Emirates is about to make the presentation, His Royal Highness Sheikh Ahmed bin Saeed Al Maktoum. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the fourth year that Emirates Airline has owned her the Emirates Classic and the Oaks days, we are very proud to be associated with the Melbourne Cup Festival. I'd like to present the trophy to the 
owner of the horse and to his trainer. Yes, and uh, congratulations to the winning connections with Black Bean, Matthew Allen, the winning trainer. Four, two and eleven the numbers in the popular trifecta. And there is Matty Allerton receiving the magnificent trophy from His Royal Highness the Sheikh. Let's return to the studio and Tim Webster, and you're right, Tim, he is one good-looking racehorse. Isn't he impressive? Good-looking yeah. horse, full stop, Peter. Thank you very much. Well, we've spoken to Racing Administration, Yvonne Blackwood, to the great jockey, Julie Crone. Here is a first. As far as we're aware, this is the only female race caller in Australia, Victoria Shaw. Welcome. Thank you, Tim. How are you? But I'm good, but not the only female race caller ever. Tell us no. about the other two. Certainly, Tim, in 1948, a young lady at the grand age of 19 was yeah. called upon in a rather unusual situation, Hanging Rock on New Year's Day, Pamela mm. Knox O'Connor. Mm. Pamela is now 71 and she's editing a newspaper in Mount Gambier. And Pamela's father was actually the owner of the Argus newspaper of the day. And at Hanging Rock on this occasion, she was asked to call the day's race, me race meeting because the race caller of the day, for some reason, couldn't do it. Yes. And uh, Pamela was in the Melbourne Hunt Club, knew her colours, got up and did the job, but that was the only occasion she assured me that she wanted to call. And another situation, we go to 1968, and a personal friend of Queen Elizabeth actually called a portion of the Grand National in yeah. England. It's about four or five race callers that cover the meeting there because the distance is so large. Mm. And that was the only other recorded situation we have of a woman calling a totalised race meeting. Now, you call Country Victoria in Enjoy. Tasmania, have worked yes. for Sky. Yes, on and, qualifications. And have just got a, a good offer. Singapore? We have actually met yeah. um, members of the Singapore Turf Club yesterday at the VRC Ladies Luncheon for the Oaks. And um, that should be going ahead next year, which should be lovely. And here's an interesting thing, uh, finally. You come here often, call to tape, yes. and get some of uh, the great race callers, including our own, to go yeah. over them and give you a few tips. I certainly do. Every weekend for the past three and a half years, I've turned up to Metropolitan or Country Tracks, recorded the day's race meeting to tape, and the blokes, of course, have gone yeah. over and said, look, this is where you're going right, this is where you're going wrong, what you need to do, and just keep going. Certainly, it doesn't come to you at first, no. and three and a half years into it, I'm only just to feel confident okay. about it now. Very quickly, um, it is a very male dominated area of racing. Why? I don't think women are interested. There is no discrimination out there, Tim. No one's saying, no. you, you're female, get out of here, find something else to do. Women certainly have not considered it as an occupation. Mm. And I've loved live radio and live television. For me, live racing, you can't get much better than that. Good on you. Thanks for coming to join us. Thank you. It's great to talk to you. Victoria Shaw, race caller. We'll take a break on Oaks Day 2000. Winner of the BRC Oats, I tell you what, winning a race on Cup Day, winning a race on Derby Day, winning a race on Oaks Day is very, very special indeed for the owners, for the trainers, for everyone involved in the horse. I've got Wayne Hawks here with me, we'll have a chat to him shortly, but before we do, we want to get you involved in our competition. It's a beaut competition this year because it's a beaut car. The exhilarating new Honda Civic. Look at that sexy new gear shift. Terrific, isn't it? Very nice. Yes, my director just like that. He must be a racing driver. There's the nice racing driver position on the wheel. We've got somebody who knows what they're doing driving the car. <laughs> That's the Honda Civic five-door hatch. Absolutely beautiful piece of machinery. There is that sexy new gear shift. Look at it. Fantastic. Beautifully done inside. As I mentioned earlier, I ride uh, one of their bikes, Honda Shadow. It's as smooth as silk, and I'll bet that is too. The Honda Civic. In fact, Sandra Sully had one of those to drive early in the week. 1902 555 665 is the number to call, and just tell us which was the last international horse to win the Melbourne Cup. Belldale Ball, Vintage Crop, or Farlap? I can't make it any easier, can I? And uh, you can enter as many times as you like. We'll announce the winner on Emirates Stakes Day. Magnificent. And thank you, Honda, for your involvement. We appreciate it. That is a beaut prize. Get on the phone. Here is the trainer of Lovelorn. Well, you're sort of the trainer of Lovelorn. Your dad, your dad really is. But he, he, he's just here. 
John yeah. Hawkes is just behind us here watching television. Yeah, he's sitting at home and uh, decided not to come to the races today, so he's probably sitting back in his track seat having a diet <laughs> cake and uh, probably the happiest man in Melbourne today. Well, he would be. It was a great run. Were you a bit concerned after the Wakeful? Yeah, probably a little bit, you know, I mean, but she's a very, very tough filly and things didn't sort of go to plan in the in the Wakeful and she's had a few little nigg niggling problems and to her credit, she, uh, you know, since Saturday's run, she uh, she just kept licking the bin and uh, she's a very, very tough filly and, well, she just basically outstayed them today. Yeah, she did. She won it like a very good horse, didn't she? She did. And beautifully ridden by Brett, who's just having a terrific time. Yeah, Brett Preble, he just, he's the man of the moment, but uh, he's young, he's keen and believe you me, he'll be at the track tomorrow morning and, uh, you know, he just can't do a thing wrong, but as I said, I mean, Brett Brett Preble, without a doubt, is the hardest working jockey in Victoria, probably nearly Australia, for a leading jockey. Without a doubt. Talk us through here. What were you thinking at this stage of the race? Well, I mean, you know, she uh, she loomed up to the, uh, the the second horse there and uh, the Hayes horse, and it, uh, it, it sort of got back in front there, and I, I actually thought that we were going to get beat, but she just sort of kept whacking away and uh, just basically ground them into the ground and uh, outstayed them. Yeah, she did, and uh, Peter Donegan mentioned, uh, and so did uh, Roy Higgins. Lolita Starr looked a bit distressed and was sweating up before the race, but that was was a good effort to come up on the outside of you there and eventually finish third in the race. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we thought she was the one to beat. I mean, when you win wa uh, wakeful stakes, yeah. like she did on Saturday, well, they're always the ones to beat because the horses that race on the Saturday and back up during the week, if they run enormous, well, they're always in there, the cups and, the, and those sort of races. So. Peter Donegan's down in our Manning Yard. I know he'd like uh, to ask you a question or two, Pete. Yeah, Wayne, uh, a month's a long time in racing, isn't it? You had that shattering disappointment with Unworldly, who looked as though for all the world she was going to be an Oaks fan and then one month later you've won the race anyway. Yeah, you're right, Peter. It uh, was, was a pretty emotional time and, uh, you know, I mean, I think we all felt it, you know, and I think the probably the thing that touched us the most was the phone calls and the faxes from uh, people from all over Australia that, uh, well, I'll be honest, someone that uh, sent me a fax I didn't even think liked me and uh, <laughs> sent, a, sent a fax and uh, said I was feeling for you and everything like that and it was like back in the octagonal days when we used to get the fan mail and that's how much mail we got, so she certainly touched everybody's heart and it's a loss to us, but it was also a big, big loss to the whole racing industry, I think. Yeah. Well done again, Mike. Thanks, Peter. And uh, before we leave you, I mean, uh, are there two nicer blokes involved in racing in the world than Jack and Bobby? They're very, very down to earth. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Bob Ingham's probably watching uh, back at home in Sydney right now, and uh, he'd be, the, he'd be the, one of the happiest blokes in Australia. And Jack Ingham's here, and uh, they're just well, they're just great blokes to train yeah. for, and nothing's ever a problem. And you know, some people have a bit of the tall poppy syndrome where they want to knock them, but believe yeah. you me, they're the most down to earth people you've ever met, and directly and indirectly, they help employ thousands of people in the racing industry. Yeah, they do, and your staff around Australia do they do a good job. Eh? Well, that's it. I mean, you know, you're only as good as what your staff are, and I know they're all yeah. sort of all be at the studs and the stables and everywhere probably watching this and uh, guys well done we came through yeah finally quick you want to tell your old man to get down here and help with the feeding up or what yeah well exactly i'll go the, I, might, I might go to the bar and uh, you can go home and do the work is That's, that right sounds fair to me hawksy get down here we'll take a break come back with more vrc oaks day 2000 Yeah, that's what the Oaks is all about, strolling around, looking gorgeous amongst the roses. Now our fashion competition winner, Eddie Moliere from Corumban, home of the beautiful bird sanctuary up there in Queensland. Good on you. Favourite designer was John Cavill. Now, Eddie, you've won a magnificent thing. Weekend in the Yarra Valley, the Domaine Chandon Experience gift pack and $1,000 spending money from L'Oreal. The last is the Chadston Fashion Plate. To talk you through it, Peter Donegan and Jenny Chapman, one more time. One more time, Tim, and let's hope we can find the winner of the Get Out Stakes. And uh, we've just received the crowd figure today, Jen. Yes. Last year, there were 83,000 people here at Oaks Day, and we marvelled about that. We thought that was fantastic. Today at Flemington, there are 96,406 people on a working day. The aggregate so far in this carnival is 310,000, which breaks by 14,000, the overall record, and we've still got a day to go. It's quite incredible, isn't it? It is unbelievable.
Now they're in the mounting yard for the last. As Tim said, we'll start them off with Silk Shamrock, which looks really well. Noel Callow, the rider for Glenn Thornton. She led at uh, Mooney Valley, and I thought she fought on quite hard there. Just finished second behind Final Way. 57 and a half kilos and up to the 1800. That's my little concern for her. Maybe a place chance. A few spots oh, of rain. Might, yeah, a few light spots of rain starting to fall prior to the last. Number two, the Fats. Riding change here, Patrick Payne replacing the injured Jimmy Cassidy for Michael Maroney. I like this horse. He gets back. He, he really does run on in his races. I think the distance will suit him today, stepping up to the 1,800 metres. And he's a quite nice guy you there today. So Pete Payne, the replacement rider. Number three, new trader, Nikki, uh, Ricky Cartwright takes the ride for Louise um, Bonetta. Uh, sorry, Louise Bonella at Cranbourne. Yes, uh, this horse settled midfield and ran on quite well there at Werribee to finish second behind the collector. A little query him too about running out a strong 1800 metres but maybe a place chance. Now on number four is the omen tip of the day. I think a few will be on this all tanked up uh, to be ridden by Darren Beedman for Steve Richards at Flemington. He's a dry tracker Peter and he gets that here today. He's had a little freshen up. Uh, this type of class does suit this horse and I think he comes right into it. I think he's there with a good each way chance. This one bloke who's went down here in the mounting yard with us should be on it. Number five a mission. Brett Preble the rider. Can he do it again? Cliffy Brown's already toasted success today too. Well his form has been terrific having one at Cranbourne, beating Tanneth there, and then a very good second behind It's Contagious at Mooney Valley. Uh, back on the dry track, he's well suited. He's very promising. He's only a four-year-old, and I think he's got a future. Watch up star number seven doesn't have a great gait. Brian Werner is the rider. Leon Corston's the trainer here at Flemington. This horse is unbeaten at this track and distance, Peter, so uh, he must come into the race with some sort of calculations. I just wonder whether he's, or not he's quite up to it, so uh, I'll leave him with a place chance. And there are the kangaroo colours, the blue and white colours of the North Melbourne Football Club aboard number eight metallic Damien Oliver for Robert Spurden of Ballarat. Very honest horse in a lesser type of grade than this race here today. He's racing well enough. The dry track does suit him and he's got a good jockey on board so he's probably there with the trifecta chance. And one more. Peter Hayes is the trainer. Stephen Baster is the rider. He was out amongst the crowd before throwing lollies to the crowd. I wonder if he'll give them uh, something sweet here in the last. I noticed he was getting lots of kisses from the girls too. Well that's exactly why I did. No, no, no. He's not stupid. Still a scene's a, a big tra dry track type of horse and this will suit him here today. He's got the blinkers on as well. He has got the ability and I think up to the 1800 he comes right into the race. He looks particularly well too. Always well turned out the Hayes horses. What about the tight figures on the last? Dan Maliki can help us out. Perhaps he can't. So, the Fats, number two, at $7.90. Dan, of course, is up there learning his colours for the last race at the moment. Emission, number five, at $3.50 is the favourite. And they are the top two, but there are a few good each way chances there. One, three, four, seven, eight, all in the betting. Then we go over the page and take a look at the other chances, the other contenders. Indian Ridge, number 13, at $7.60 is the best of them. So that's the field. Yeah, Big pools for the... Uh, Last race on the card, and uh, Tim Gossage is down in the betting ring. What can you tell us, Timothy? Pete, bit of specking for the two. The Fats is in four points. Uh, new Traders also in at $16 on the tote, but it is much shorter in the ring, about four points shorter. They allowed them to get on a mission. It drifted out. Now they're back on it again. It's going to start the obvious favourite. And, uh, yes, he's going to jump favourite in the last. And, Pete, I did what Stephen Bastard did, and I threw lollies and got arrested. <laughs> yes, but they were big ones, Tim. You shouldn't <laughs> throw those big things. Here we are in the last, and it's the Fats from Jennifer, a mission from Richard, myself and Dan, steal a scene from Letsy, Indian Ridge from Gary Willis. So we still have a wide range of selections here for the final event, which is over the 1,800-metre course. They've got a run of 400 metres down to the first turn in this, the Chadston Fashion Plate, the last... Last race on the card. They're about to head to the starting stalls. As